Friends, we come to the main stuff now at the Formula One stock cars. Heat number one lining up. One of six races here today for the Formula Ones. On the front row of the grid, Rob Scriven down to white for the current grading period, number 117. Alongside in 162, Richard Pratt at the back of the field is Stuart Smith, number one. So it is 117, Rob Scriven on the inside position on the front row of the grid. 162, Richard Pratt on the outside. Registered as John Pratt, but as the sign writing shows, his name is Richard. 329 and 101 on the second row of the grid. Stu Young on the inside, 101, Pete Palmer on the outside. 430, Mick Crocker going past. John Lander, number 23, as Pete White, the starter, sends them off on their rolling lap. First eight goes through to the uh, grand final, the Mirror Grand Prix qualifying round. Joe Jopling, Rich Dainsworth there. Dan Clark, 2.03. He's going back down to blue for the next uh, grading period. Stu Smith at the back of them in number one, the world champion. Getting slowed down there by Pete Smith, or Pete White, rather. Stewart still seeking a sponsor. Looks like the E's being converted into an O now on the uh, wing there. Well, can Stewart be stopped here today? Still dominating Formula One stock car racing. has booked a place on the front row of the grid in the world final, chasing his sixth world championship. Pete White finally satisfied. Down goes the green, and the race is underway. Rob Scribble leads them off in 117. Richard Pratt coming under heavy pressure from Stu Young in 329, and he's through in the second place, 329. Well, Palmer getting left there, 101 Ace was coming through strongly in 354. Smith's already up alongside Dan, Dan Clark. He's past Joe Jopling in 452. Going past Terry Davis as well now in 458. Stu Young now leads for 329 indeed in second place. It's still Rob Scriven. Richard Pratt's pulled up on the center green here. And Ray Fielness, the race takes place. Andy Malta's closing in on the second place man, Stu Young. Ainsworth's coming through strongly, I can tell you. You might see Ainsworth in view now. Yes, there he is, just coming off the turn. Howard Davis is up there as well in 327, going past Young now for third place. Rob Scriven, though, breaking fairly clear. He's got two-thirds of the length of a straight lead over the second-place car. Les Spencer getting edged out of the way there on that turn. Ainsworth now challenging Davis. And Davis going wide and Ainsworth indeed through in 354. Davis drops back a place, Stu Young behind him, and John Lander. Got a strong West Country presence here in the leading positions. What with Rob Scriven, Howard Davis, and John Lander all well up. Richard Ainsworth from the opposite end of the country, they're up in uh, Cumbria. Leading red top in this one, closing in on Andy Maltus. Ainsworth here in third place. So Maltus in 314 is going to get the bumper. No, indeed. Ainsworth just slips through on the inside. Ainsworth so unlucky in the World Championship to have a puncture. Rule him out of this year's title chase. Jopling and Clark side by side. Smith is long gone. Stu Young dropping back in 329. There indeed is Smith. He's past Howard Davis now. Looks like we could get quite a battle between Smith and Ainsworth in the closing stages of Heat 1 here. In this Grand Prix meeting, first of the series. Maltus hits the fence, he's lost his suspension completely there, it looked like. It did look as if he was worried there by Smith coming through on the inside. Maltus going wide and overcooking it straight to the fence. Rob Striven, 117, Richard Ainsworth second in 354. And the Cumbrian driver closing in all the time, barrel across the track there. There's Scriven, Ainsworth in second, Stu Smith now third. Fourth place is John Lander, fifth Dan Clark in 2.03. Zainsworth tries to nudge Scriven out of the way and take the lead, and indeed he does. Zainsworth is through. Stu Smith in third place with Rob Scriven standing between him and the race leader. So Ainsworth away, Scriven second, Stuart Smith soon to become second, they're going into the turn, clashes with Scriven. Terry Davis has spun out on the turn, 4.58, so there's Spencer having to go wide there. There goes the race leader. Richard Ainsworth Smith is clear now into second place. So can the world champion haul in that lead of Ainsworth. He's got to watch out for that barrel going into the turn. Looks like Rob Scriven just caught it. Behind Scriven, it is now, looks like Glenn Daft, 46. John Lander, 23, 203, Dan Clark. 327, Howard Davis, 452, Joe Jopling. That's about the running order at the present time. Other cars, of course, in the race. But it looks like a two-man drive now for a win in heat one of the Formula 1s here today.
And so it's good. Smith against Ainsworth with Ainsworth hand, holding the upper hand at the present time. Mick Crocker going through there along with Pete Palmer. And there goes Ainsworth. Smith not making significant inroads into that lead. A lot of smoke coming up from the number one car. Ainsworth with a superbly built machine there going through on the inside as Palmer hits the fence. Palmer from Milton Keynes hits the stanchion there supporting the safety fence. Just under, just under three laps to go now. Ainsworth looking good for the win here, though. Smith just can't catch him. Ainsworth, one of the biggest names not to be in the world final. Ray, Ray Bird it is, in fact, in 46. is pulled up in the corner then Daft. Oh, here it is, of course, Ray Bird. Daft drives 96. Well, I don't think anyone's going to catch Richard Ainsworth now. Certainly not Stuart Smith. Well, uh, Stuart Smith's the most likely one, but uh, I don't think anyone's going to catch him. Last lap marker coming out. Smith closing it all the time, though. And now, as we go into the closing stages, could it be too late for the world champion to haul in Richard Ainsworth? Looking now for the big use of the bumper on the final turn, but I don't think, no, no, he's not going to make that gap up. The checkered flag is raised now for the man coming across the line for the win. Number 354, Rich Danes with win C1 here at Northampton. Second place, number one, Stuart Smith. Looks like third place has yet to come in. It looks now as if it could be Dan Clark at 203, John Lander fourth, and possibly Rob Striven fifth. And indeed part of the car falling off Terry Davis's car there. It looks like part of the bumper disappearing onto the track. There's a win by Richard Ainsworth then in heat one. Stuart Smith second in number one. Looks like Dan Clark got third in 203. We'll confirm those results as soon as we get them officially from race control. Stuart Smith, though, couldn't catch the Flying Cumbrian Richard Ainsworth there. 354 coming in for a well-merited win. He's not going to win the World Championship this year, but he might well win the Grand Prix. That's all he's got to go for now. And Ainsworth looking good. Going through to the final, the first final of the Grand Prix with a convincing win there over the World Champion Stuart Smith. Well, we have the official result now of uh, Heat 1 for the Formula 1s in this Grand Prix meeting. First was 354 Richard Ainsworth, second Stu Smith, third indeed was Dan Clark, fourth John Lander, fifth Rob Scriven, sixth place Joe Jopling, seventh Howard Davis, the West Countryman getting fourth, fifth and seventh there, eighth was 98 Les Spencer, ninth Mick Crocker, 430, and tenth was Steve Ferris, 225. The first eight, that's uh, Ainsworth down to Spencer qualify for the final, but for Crocker, Ferris, and the cars outside the top ten, it's a route through the consolation if they're going to get to the final. The race is underway here, heat two in the Formula One's. Mark Harrison gets the jump into first place, second place Wayne Handley. Third place it is number nine Graham Ascom. Fourth is John Wright, fifth Dave Tapping, sixth Fred Skinner just being overhauled by 91 Wilf Warns. Paul Lowe pulling off already in 4.10. coming through. Frankie Weymouth's got the drop on the other Reds. Bert Finnegan's left at the back. Won the British Drivers' Championship here at Northampton earlier in the season. It's Carrington who leads. Number 271 Carrington from Findon in Northampton. Good shoemaking country. Second place, John Wright certainly going well these days. Back up to blue for the next grading period. John Wright, 128. Dave Tapping just behind him, 4 and 2. Graham Ascom, Wilf Warns, Wayne Handley. Then we have a blue top. It looks like Des Chandler. 213 is up there, Rob Cowley, 304, Dave Meller, 8, Gary Castell, 485, Terry Jackson, 175, Rob Pierce puts the bumper in on Jackson, now he goes into the fence. Wayman coming through the field, he's past Warns, Chandler's behind him, Alan Long, or rather Keith Long's gone into the fence, number 277, novice driver, Keith from Whitney in Oxfordshire. Novice driver confirmed by the Black Cross. Bert Finnegan getting stuck in there in the middle of those blues. Rob Cowley and Rob Pierce behind him. Another white top visiting the fence. Mello going through, 3.04. Dave Mello not having too many points these days, but not too many meetings either. Mello indeed down amongst the blues, but retains red due to lack of meetings in the next grading period. So Mello is showing strongly here in Heat 2. He's past Des Chandler now in 2.13. Down into the turn. Wolf Warns behind him, Gary Castell, Bert Finnegan, all up there in 55. Still carrying some leading though in 271. This action happening a bit further down the field with Dave Meller. Carrington is first, I can tell you, in 271. Going past Wayne Handley there, the challenge coming from Graham Ascom and John Wright now. I think Ascom could have lost the lap, he's lost his place now anyway. As John Wright comes through the yellow topped car. Can 
Gets it down into the turn for Grey Skies, beginning to unload their rain on this Sprayfield circuit now. Waveman showing well, it looks like he's in third place at the present time behind John Wright there in 2-1-2. Two -two. Well, Frankie Waveman well on the way to another National Points Championship this year. After winning last year, he's a good 200 points ahead of Dave Beresford in this year's championship chase. Waveman closing in all the time on John Wright, but Mark Carrington has got the clear run out in front. Carrington, good way ahead, but Wayman's through now into second. John Wright back in third now in 128. Fourth place is Dave Tapping, 4 and 2. Dave Meller, fifth. Also up there's Burton Finnegan, Gary Castell, Rob Pierce, Nigel Wharton also showing strongly. Five laps to go, Mark, are going out now to Mark Carrington, 271, but uh, Wayman's closing in all the time in 212. Only surely a matter of time before the National Points Champion catches the white top, and there it is. Throw on the inside, Frankie Wayman hits the front here in heat three, heat two rather, of this Grand Prix meeting. Wayman originally programmed in heat three, but uh, surfacing in heat two instead. Three and a half laps now left in heat two. Frankie Wayman looking well on his way to a place in the final. Blew up his shale car recently, having to use a tarmac car on both tarmac and shale. Bella now pressing Dave, or rather, John Wright looking at 128. Dave Mellor now through into third place. Nigel Watson, there, 36 indeed, it's Rod Falling then coming off the turn. Frankie Wayman, the leader, though, about to lap Falling. Second place still is Mark Carrington, third place Dave Mellor, fourth John Wright, fifth Dave Tapping, and sixth now is Bert Finnegan. Into the final lap now. I don't think anyone's going to catch Wayne, but now he's well clear here in heat two. Carrington's still in second. The Whites are holding on for a place in the final here. Bella about to take second from him. But it's going to be a win for Frankie Wayman. Wayman comes off the turn to greet the check and flag. 2-1-2, Wayman wins. Second place goes to Dave Meller in 3-0-4. Third place, Mark Carrington, a fine drive from the white top driver in 2-7-1. Looks like after him came Dave Tapping, 4-1-2. And then in fifth place, Bert Finnegan, number 55, with sixth place going to Nigel Walson in 4-22. So uh, we obviously wait confirmation from race control on that result, but it's a win for Frankie Wayman in heat two goes through to the final. So we've had Ainsworth winning Heat 1, Weymouth, Wayman winning Heat 2. The very best talent in Formula 1's winning through here in the opening couple of heats here today at Northampton. The win for Frankie Wayman in Heat 2, virtually unopposed. Result now of Event 2, Heat 2, the uh, Formula 1 second heat. First place, 2-1-2 two two Frankie Wayman. Second place went to 3-0-4 Dave Meller. Third was Mark Carrington. Fourth, Dave Tapping. Fifth, Bert Finnegan, sixth indeed was John Wright, 128, seventh was Nigel Wharton, eighth place Rob Pierce, and just missing out number eight, Gary Castell, and 213, Des Chandler. So that's all the way through from Wayman to Pierce, qualify for the final. Those top eight going through to join the eight we already have there. And back into a Formula One after that race in the hot rod earlier on. Bobby Burns, number 471, putting the one back on the end of his number and getting into a Formula One at that. Well, Bobby out of racing earlier this season with car problems with that machine. Had to borrow cars for a while, but back with the 471 motor now in its normal shape and colours. So away go the field, 370, Jeff Keeling leads them off. Another March Bodies driver. Second place, we have number 161, that's Kev Lowe from Blaby in Leicestershire. Third place, 137, Dave Harris. 306, McNode going through there. Brian Tuffin not far behind. Burns already closing in on the Reds. 33, Peter Falling behind him. It's Keeling who's away in 3.7.0. Got a good lead over the second place man. Burns certainly getting well stuck in. I'm sure he's relishing the contact after being in the hot rods earlier on. Phil Wheelton's got caught up by the uh, pit gate. Seven Murray Harrison coming back in off the centre green. And away down the home straight goes the leader, 370, Jeff Keeling. Second place now is number 10, Richard Dobson. Third place is 266, Jeff Stagg. Fourth place now, Mo Smith, 51. And Kevlo's pulled off onto the infield in 161. 
there goes the yellow top. Looked like it could have been Phil Wheelton after that uh, clash up by the pit gate. And indeed it is, Wheelton, first of the March bodies cars this year to go up to yellow. 145, Frank North also pulled out of the race. Jeff Stagg coming through strongly in 266. Bo Smith also up there, number 51. Behind him, 33, Peter Falding. Well, Falding's managed to drop the other superstars. Mike Shelley behind him. Then Mick Noden, 471, Bobby Burns. 155, Brian Tuffman also coming up through the field. With a fair way to go for the Lincoln Imp. Dobson then in second place, number 10. Indeed, indeed now leads, I think, with the white top having a go drop back. Yes, Richard Dobson leads. Jeff Stagg is second, and there is the former leader, Jeff Keeling, back in third place now, in number 370. Yellow top getting back into the race there, Murray Harrison, number 97. Mike Shirley up to red top for the next grading period. There is another shot of Murray Harrison. Mike Shirley there with Mick Noden just behind him in 306. Signals going out there to Dobson. Dobson in the number 10 car. Looks like he's got a, a badge of a bat on the wing as well. Dobson confirming his number there with a large painted TEN on his uh, wing between the two actual sections of it, two actual wings on the side. Jeff Stagg there having quite a race for Peter Falling, 33. Dobson first, then second place now is Falding. The younger superstar through into second. So nearly missed out on the world final place when he was marked out at four, in 14th of the Bellevue Semi, but then was upgraded to ninth on the protest. Jeff Stagg now third in 266. A lot of smoke coming off the uh, Jeff Stagg car now, though. Now can Falding mount the challenge on the race leader, Dobson? and one of the middle range yellow top drivers indeed in uh, 64th place in the next grading list dropped one place from the uh, previous month those gradings that they're currently operating on Dobson then coming up to lap some of the back markers with a car in his sights there still slate, slate grey skies over this Northampton circuit three laps to go at least it's stopped raining now Dobson first, second falling, think of a third, that's Jeff Stagg still in 266. Fourth place, Mo Smith, fifth, Mick Noden, sixth place is Murray Harrison, seventh, Mike Shirley, eighth is 471, Bobby Burns. So it looks like Burns is just about going to clinch a place in the final, but he's got a battle going on with Brian Tuplin for that eighth place. Indeed, there they are, going past the back mark of 137. Lincoln Imp, Brian Tuplin trying to get in on them. Burns get him out of the way. Murray Harrison spins up right in front of them. And clouted there by 137, Dave Harris. Well, Murray Harrison having all kinds of problems in this race on the final lap now. And the flag being ready. The checkered flag goes out for the race winner. And it is indeed right at the end. Number 10, Richard Dobson, who holds on. So it's Dobson first in number 10. Second place went to number 33, Peter Falding. Well, Falding couldn't close in. He ran out of laps there to close in on the leader. Chris Paxford getting a battering there after the race. And uh, Murray Harrison yet again in view. And there is Chris Paxford up onto the infield. So Paxford taking quite a clout after the race. You can see the wheels on the inside of the car having a definite problem. The inside of his track racing terms. Richard Dobson wins though in car number 10. Falding couldn't catch him. And Peter Falding going well there in second place. Couldn't quite get up though on the race winner. Number 10, the yellow top. Richard Dobson finally a breakaway from the Reds and Silvers that won the first couple of races. This time it's Dobson who goes through to the final with a win in Heat 3. Well, Richard, many congratulations on the win. How did the race look to you? Um, I had a good race. Um, probably I could have gone a little bit faster. The uh, red oil warning light was on all the time. So you having problems with the car all the time. I understand you had problems before the uh, race also with it. Uh, yeah, well, well, only minor problems, uh, setting the timing and one thing and another. Now, how often do you race? Because we don't see you too often in front of our cameras. Uh, no. what, what are your regular tracks? Uh, well, being a farmer, I can only race as the weather permits. Um, but So therefore, my regular tracks are northern tracks. 
I think up till now, this season, I've only done nine meetings. Nine meetings, yet you're still up, uh, well up in the yellows, aren't you? Oh, yes. We're trying to be competitive. Yes. Now, uh, how do you find conditions today? Because there's been a bit of rain, but the track's dried out a fair bit, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, ideal conditions. We're a bit apprehensive with the dark clouds we've got overhead, but uh, it should hold off and uh, we're in for some good racing. How do you feel about the final? Uh, if I can get the oil light problem sorted out, um, yeah, I should uh, do fairly well. Luck that, being with me. Was that your first win of the season? Yes, it is, yeah. So uh, we'll be looking for some more success maybe later on. Mind you, there's going to be some talent out there, isn't there? Certainly is, yeah. Best of luck for the final. Thank you Thank very you. much. Result of Heat 3 in the Formula 1s. First place, number 10, Richard Dobson. Second place was 33, Peter Folding. Third was Jeff Stagg. Fourth, McNoden. Fifth, Mo Smith. Sixth, Mike Shirley. Seventh was Bobby Burns. Eighth, Brian Tuplin. Ninth, and non-qualified David Squire. Tenth was 370, Jeff Keeling. You white to show that. Green flag. And indeed he does. The race is underway. Constellation race coming off now here at Northampton with the race for the lead going into the first turn between Askham and Handley. And it's Askham who wins out. Stu Young right behind him, 329. Let's look at the yellows now coming down. There's Terry Jackson in the middle of it. Steve Ferris getting involved there as Stuart Smith, 139, comes through into them. Dave Squire hits the fence. Murray Harris is having a rough ride down the back straight. Stu Young onto the infield as well. These constellations can get very, very hairy as these drivers pursue their last chance of a place in the final. Des Chandler having problems there. Very tempting target now for cars coming off the turn. Cars having to thread a narrow run on the outside of the 213 car. I don't think Chandler can get it out of the way. Barry Harrison in more trouble there with Wolf Warns, 91. Barrel across the track in the middle there. An added hazard. Someone surely is going to pick that up. More problems there. White Tops getting jostled with this amount of White Tops here. White tops here, it does always spell recipe for trouble. Barrel spinning across the track and out of the way. A bit more off the right off the racing line now. So looking for the leader now, it's Wolf Warns 91. Murray Harrison in front of him, uh, lap down, or he will be as soon as Warns catches up with him. Des Chandler's car still there. Pete White putting on a jacket as the rain starts pouring down here at Northampton. To what Wolf wants first. And Warns will importantly protect this 269 goes over. On well, a roll over there. 269 helped on his way by Murray Harrison. And there's a fire underneath that car. Under the 370 Jeff Keeling car. And I feel somehow this race is going to be stopped. Yes, the red flags go out. The rain is pouring down now here at Northampton. That's going to affect drivers handily if they can't get the tyres changed. But 269 is the car that they're concerned about. Let's hope the driver's OK. And 269, John Rogers from Findon in Northampton being removed from the cab of his car now. Well, the race looks like it's going to be restarted completely from scratch. Indeed, it is. The car's all lining up in great order. The rain has halted mercifully and a bit of sunshine spreading over the Brayfield circuit. But there still are some very heavy clouds over Northampton, and there you can see it brightening up, but still the ever-present threat. Yes, they had their fair share of rain here at Northampton this year. The British Drivers' Championship Day was uh, almost wrecked by rain, but uh, in the end, Bert Finnegan, when the track dried out, had the right set of tyres and beat Stuart Smith on that occasion. So Bert Finnegan will be welcoming a bit of rain, maybe drying up later. In the meantime, though, before we come to that Grand Prix race, we do have this consolation race that uh, ended in scenes of mayhem at the first attempt. I can tell you, cars that aren't going in the restart. Well, indeed, no, the green flag drops will come to those in a short while. The race is underway then in the consolation. 329, Stu Young leads them off. You might just see a screen sport sticker on the side of that car as it goes round. Difficult to see in race conditions. Well, our thanks to Stu for uh, a little bit of publicity for ourselves. There's Chandler going wide, 2 one, 3 there, letting a couple of cars through. White top driver having problems there, 59. Dave Field, I think you'll find. 49, rather. 329, Stu Young leads. Uh, the screen sports sticker that's doing the job there. 162, Richard Pratt in second. Third place, Chris Paxford. Fourth place is Phil Wheelton, 411. 
Well, Young going wide there, getting a battering, going down the home straight from his fellow White Top and Pratt's through in 1-6-2. Paxford challenging strongly in third place, fourth place Phil Wheelton. Fifth now is Steve Ferris, no, it's Fred Skinner, 228. Always get those two mixed up. Behind 228, 485, Terry Jackson, and comes 139, Stu Smith. And 213 does Chan. The Pratt hitting the fence are having his problems as 228 Skinner comes through. So it's Stu Young back in first place, second place Chris Paxford, third place Phil Wheelton. Then we have Skinner, then we have Pratt, Jackson, Smith, Chandler, Cowley, Castell, Warns, I think it is, Folding, Rod Folding. Coming up into a qualification place. The red top, Terry Jackson spinning out there with Stu Smith, 139. Indeed, uh, a couple of cases of Smiths there because, of course, uh, it was the other Stu Smith's car that uh, Terry Jackson's driving there, his old machine. Gary Castello with a huge number plate on the roof, good advertising billboard as it's being used now. So, Stu Young leads them off 329. Second place looks like Fred Skinner, 228, just slipping through, but he's caught the back marker in his way, and that is long. Uh, novice driver, 277. Skinner there, Paxford right in his tail, and Phil Wheels and Rod Farley going past the scattered barrels. Murray Harrison there. He certainly uh, took part in all the fun of the first attempt. And the car's having to avoid those barrels now. Stu Young coming down onto that turn, or indeed it's the entrance to the turn. That's a difficult place. And it looks like Wilson hit one. He's pushed it out of the way, though, without any damage. Well, this is the car, not the barrel. Stu Young first, then. Steve, or rather Fred Skinner in second. 225 and 228 do cause the problems. It's Fred Skinner second in 228. Well, Stu Young, 329. The leader is based at Tamworth in Staffordshire. That's Rob Cowley won that uh, Grand National at Bellevue on World semi-final night. Stu Young, 329, drifting, and he's lost it now to 228. So that's 228, Fred Skinner from Stoke Prior in Worcestershire, who leads here in the consolation race for the Formula Ones at Northampton. Looks like a halfway flank might have gone out, no uh, pink white. Just signaling to 228, Fred Skinner, he leads. Second place, Stu Young. Third place, Chris Paxford. Fourth, we have Rob Cowley. Then we have Richard Pratt, Rod Falding, 36. Then we have Phil Wheelton. Then 269, the car that overturned earlier. That was the car of John Rogers. So Rogers able to take part in the rerun after the spin out. So let's take a look at the cars coming through. There's Rod Falding, 36, the only red top, past Richard Pratt in 162. Folding looking for a place in the final where his son already is established. That's Peter, 33. Rod coming up now on Paxford. He's got Cowley in his sights. He can't rule Cowley out. He's in second place. Stu Young still in front in 329. That screen sports stick is bringing him a bit of luck. Indeed, it is 228. Who's in the front? It's 329 who's second. Yes, with uh, Skinner having pulled a fair way off. It looks for a moment as if Young was back in front. But of course, it is Skinner. Skinner a good way off. But Stu Young's going to make the final. Rob Cowley third. Rod Falling is fourth. Fifth place, Chris Paxford. Sixth is Richard Pratt. Seventh now is uh, John Rogers. Battling it out with Phil Wheelton. And. Uh, 228 Skinner, or rather 228. Yes, it is indeed Skinner having his problems there. Flat tyre puts Stu Young back in first place. And Skinner with a couple of flat tyres there, so 228 is not going to be able to finish. We'll be very lucky if he can get across the line in a qualification position now. You see all the cars parked up on the inside. More problems there. Skinner parked up behind the Terry Jackson car. The wheel completely off the rim there tire completely off the rim at least. Into the final lap now. Phil Wheelton spun out on the home straight, so he's lost his place in the final. Coming through for the checkered flag. And it goes out to Rod Folding there. Stu Young spun out right in the final turn. Well, Folding came up from sixth place, roughly to first place right at the end, just edging out Stu Young. Well, Young had the lead, what, three times in that race. But Rod Folding catching him right in the final turn. Stu Young recovering to take a place in the final. Murray Harrison parked up on the turn. He certainly had a good race there. Didn't necessarily get in the uh, placings, but 
Plenty of action there. Indeed, since he took on Stuart Smith at Coventry a while ago, Murray seems to have been going for the full action stuff in racing rather than uh, some cars who just sit back and let them all go by. Well, confirmation is that Rod Folding won. Rob Cowley was second in number 73. I think Stu Young, though, in the 329 car will have got a place in the final. Yes, Stuart, it's amazing the coverage you can get if you've got a screen sport sticker on the car. <laughs> well, that gentleman in view there is a starter here at uh, Northampton, Pete White. Pete, you're certainly a stickler on the rolling laps, aren't you? Oh, yes. Uh, you know, you've got to be fair with all the drivers. You know, when you put them in a graded order uh, and you get one or two what creep forward, it's uh, they can soon have a big pile-up, you know, and that's the reason I had to keep an eye on them, you know, and keep them in a certain space to, to get, you know, the first lap over. So once they move up and they start edging forward, getting over enthusiastic, that's when you put the red out? That's right, you know, especially, you know, the, most of the drivers keep an eye on me, but one or two on them, they've got too eager and they start sticking their foot down. Now, when the race is in progress, what, uh, what communication do you have up to the race control? Because you're obviously calling positions all the way through. Well, they only tell me uh, what the spectator hears, you know, on the uh, placings and everything else. That's what only the headphones are for. So you're picking up the, you're picking up the commentary then? That's off, right, off yes. The main track That's commentary. it, yes. How long have you been doing starting now? Well, I think uh, so I've been married 13 years, 12 years. And uh, you cover all the various formula here at Northampton then? Well, I do nearly every one of uh, Northampton tracks. Yes, which is your own particular favourite form of racing? Because you get everything here at Northampton, don't you? Oh, yes. Well, I like them all, really, but Formula, win, Formula Ones are the best. Do you, have you ever worked anywhere else, or is it just Northampton for you? Well, I used to do uh, Leicester, Coventry, Wisbeach, Boston, but now just Northampton only. Yes, well, what do you think about uh, the race we've got coming up now? Because we, the hot rods uh, are looking pretty good today. They're coming up next. Uh, that Phil White, he's no relation, is he? Pun? That Phil White that races, he's no, re he's no relation, is he, the hot rod driver? Uh, what, you mean that number 47? No, uh, no, no, the 64 in the, in the hot rods, Phil White, Six he's no relation, is he? No, no, no. No, none, no. none at all. No. <laughs> of course, it's a completely different thing than when you're with the hot rods, when you're, when you're signalling on the hot rods, because you have that blue flag as well up there, don't you? Oh, yes, uh, the blue flag is for, uh, for the driver, you know, faster driver coming up on a slow driver, and as soon as the driver sees the uh, blue flag, he can know that the driver behind can pass either side on him, you know, without the driver moving. That, uh, that adds quite a bit of work, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, you've got to have eyes in the back of your head with the hot rods, you know, watching for little taps here and there. They're a bit crafty. Well, thanks very much, Pete. Yes, you've got to watch out for the contact. Thanks very much, Pete. All right. We look forward to this next race coming up. Thank you. All right, cheers. Let's take a look now at the official results of the Constellation race. We have now the 32-car final confirmed. The... Uh, the lineup confirmed because we have first in this one Rod Falding 36, second was Rob Cowley 73, third was Chris Paxford 459, fourth Richard Pratt 162 then we had Gary Castell number 8, 269 John Rogers, getting home in seventh place Stu Young and eighth place Wolf Warns 91, just missing out in the place in the final 430 Mick Crocker and number 9 Graham Ascombe. Well, Pete White's back on the roster of speed as the race gets underway. It's Stu Young who leads them off in 3.29. Rob Scriven second in 1.17. Third place, Mark Carrington, 2.71. Problems already, though. John Lander out into the fence. Along with him, Joe Jopling, number 4.52. Well, it is Young who leads, 3.29. Rob Scriven going wide there, giving Mark Carrington the chance to come through into second place. Richard Pratt also up there with them. Then we have the leading yellow top. That looks like Wilf Warns, 91, followed by John Wright, 128. John Rogers, 269, 412. Dave Tabby. But look at the rest of the yellows. And it's not just yellows. Dan Clark suspended in mid-air there as the barrel comes to a rest. 354 Ainsworth in there as well. 304 Mellor, 10. Richard Dobson, Mark Carrington having a fight with a barrel as all the cars go across the grass. It's completely blocked off there on the turn. Ainsworth reversing out of it. Dan Clark's managing to get away from it. The car seems pretty well twisted. Managed to get off the top of them. I think the uh, sufferer there was uh, Jeff Stagg with Dan Clark climbing all over him. Richard Dobson mounted high in the fence. Mick Norton able to drive away from it. Les Spencer caught in the middle. I think there is another car in there somewhere. I'm not too sure, but uh, I think we do only have the three cars left out of that pileup. I think there is another car. It is indeed Chris Paxford, 459, is in there somewhere, I can tell you. It's the 459 car is hidden by the Dobson machine at the present time. And indeed, there it is from the other angle. I thought there was another one in there, and it is Chris Paxford, whose car has taken a fair bit of damage. Well, absolute mayhem there going into that turn. Looks like we might have a complete restart after that. 
Well, the green flag is down and the race is away. 20 lap race here. Carrington's got the jump. Second place, Stu Young. Third place, Rob Scriven. Fourth, it looks like Richard Pratt looking for the Ellis Howard Davis. Leading blue, Bo Smith. Rob Cowley up there as well. Mike Shelley hot in his tail. Carrington, they're leading from Young. Young on the inside line, edging Carrington out of the way as the 271 car got the speed now coming down the home straight into the turn. Young's got the narrower line, but Carrington's trying to switch back on the inside. Looking now at the yellows and the blues, Shirley there. Burns coming through now in the reds. One blue being dropped there, 98 left. Spencer, Stu Smith towards the back there. Brian Tuplin has been left. Stu Young having his problems, coming under pressure from Wilf Warns. Problems there, we have Howard Davis spinning out, also going, Bo Smith. Dave Miller hitting problems, and they're hitting uh, the trouble again. Stu Smith's onto the infield, getting well out of the way, just straight across the grass. Get out of the way of uh, the drivers, of course. You're allowed to cut the corners if there is no safe line on the track. You think about it, if uh, there is no safe line, you go across that grass, you've passed about six cars. And uh, you do have a very valid excuse. So it's Mark Carrington who leads from Richard Pratt in second place. John Wright up there in third in 128. Fourth place car is 175, Rob Pierce. Then comes John Rogers. Then we have Stu Young, Rob Cowley, Richard Ainsworth leading red top. Then Bobby Burns, 471, Les Spencer, or rather Mike Shirley being overtaken by Frankie Wayman, but Finnick in behind him. So there it is, John Wright coming up now. Pierce and Richard Pratt spinning out there when uh, Pierce is through. 91 car and Wilf Warns parts up in the middle of the track. Wilf recently retired but back in action now. So Pierce chasing under waved yellows are out with the problems there for the cars. I think Wilf Warns will be one of the uh, main men they're considering, making sure that Wilf's okay. I think he's out. Well, there is the Warns car. It does look like oh, Wilf's moving. That's an encouraging sign. So a fair bit of damage there to those two cars. No, indeed, they've just got the wheels locked. Stu Young and another car. I think Wilf Warns' car has been moved. Yes, it has, so they'll be able to restart the race. Now on the waved yellows, dr drivers must assume single file. No overtaking allowed while the yellows are being waved. And it's confirmed that the race leader is 128, John Wright. And information being passed on to the drivers. They're being whipped up now, and the green flag comes out. Pete White switching over to the green. I don't know if he can get it out. Yes, he's waiting for the leader, of course, John Wright. And I think Wright's not too far off. Yes, there he is going down in front. No, they're still on the waved yellows. Another lap of uh, rolling lap. No overtaking allowed. If every car you overtake, you mark down two places. And indeed, the positions, I think, were incorrect at the time that uh, they were going to show the flag. So John Wright in the correct position now, and away goes the race. Third attempt, effectively, at uh, the grand final here today in Northampton. John Wright leads them off. Rob Pierce in second in 175. 117, Rob Scribbins has dropped out there. Waveman and Burns having a battle. Ainsworth through into third place. Now John Wright clouding the fence, and Ainsworth through into into first place, second place now Rob Pierce leads, Rob Cowley's third, John Wright fourth. Ainsworth then looking now to overhaul Pierce, that's first and second, now Ainsworth will win in the opening race of the day, looking for a heat and final double. Rob Cowley confirmed in third place in 73, Stu Smith there behind Bert Finnegan, but he's got Wharton in front of him and behind him rather, and Dave Mellis, Stu Young pulling up there. Champion with a second behind Ainsworth in heat one, looking to go one better here in the final and get these vital Grand Prix points. Ainsworth is a man though with a bit between his teeth. This is his last chance of glory this year in the Grand Prix series. He's into the first position with Pierce in second place. Wayman's not too far behind Rob Cowley in fourth. John Wright is fifth in 128. Sixth place now is Bert Finnegan. Seventh now is Stu Smith. Eighth, Nigel Water. Ainsworth building up a substantial lead. I don't think he's going to get caught here, even though there's a fairly long race. And indeed, Rob Pierce has pulled out of the race. I can tell you other cars have pulled out of Dave Tapping, Howard Davis, and Mo Smith. And there is Rob Pierce, parked up by the fence. Previously, the Mark Carrington going past. Brian Sutton in view there, 155, about to be lapped, though, in the uh, next couple of laps, surely by Rich Ainsworth in 354. Ainsworth from Ulverston in Cumbria. As I mentioned earlier, had that puncture in the World Championship semi that put him out of racing. 
I'll put him out of the world final, that is. Now looks for the Grand Prix as his sole chance of success. Big Nolan's pulled off the course as well in 3.06. There. Indeed, there is Mick with uh, the ever present puncture that so many drivers have problems with. Obviously, in contact racing with open wheel formula, it's difficult to keep the air in the tyres. But Finnegan coming through the field strongly now, car number 55. He's through into third place now. He's got Stuart Smith and his tail in fourth. Rob Pearson's car is still moving. I think he might be trying to get back in. No, indeed, he's parking up in the centre green. So there goes Wayman through, there's Finnegan behind him, and behind Finnegan it's Smith, behind Smith it's Wharton. And indeed there is Wharton trying to only put the bumper in on Smith, there's Bobby Burns dropping down the field, little Dave Meller coming up at him now in 3.04. It's been a busy day with, for Bobby Burns, one with Hot Rod Racing as well as Formula One. Ainsworth now coming up to lap Joe Joplin, 4.52. Joplin taking a wise wide line, five laps to go now in this grand final, the first Grand Prix qualifying round of the year, sponsored by the Mirror. Ainsworth first, second place is Wayman in 2-1-2. Third place now is not Tuffin, he's a lap down. Third place now is Bert Finnegan, fourth is Stuart Smith, fifth Nigel Watson. Sixth is Burns, seventh is Mellor, but that's quite a battle going on for that one. Behind them it looks like Peter Folding in 33. Rod Folding about to be overtaken now by 354 or Richard Ainsworth, the race leader here. Had a third place in last year's World Long Track final at Barlow. Ainsworth through now, putting plenty of back markers between him and the second place man. He's now got Folding behind him, Les Spencer, Mike Shirley, John Wright, all his buffers between him and 212 Frankie Wayman. 452 Joe Joplin parked up on the infield now after being lapped. Ainsworth. Going down into the turn. It's a long way down to Frankie Wayman now in second place. There is the national points champion. Behind him, a good way back, it's Bert Finnegan. And then about 100 yards almost behind the leader, it's Stuart Smith in fourth place. Going to the final lap now, it looks like it's going to be a win for Richard Ainsworth. Frankie Wayman, though, holding down a useful second place. But Ainsworth now half a lap away from victory. He won, he won. And he's looking for a win in the final. It's going to be Richard Ainsworth who picks up the major points in the Grand Prix. The first qualifying round goes to Richard Ainsworth. So Ainsworth, as I say, will be out to get this competition as compensation for the World Championship disappointments. Starts off in superb style with a win in the first qualifying round. Second place goes to Frankie Wayman in number 212. Third place to Bert Finnegan. Fourth place looks like it goes to Stuart Smith, number one. And fifth place to Nigel Watson, 422. Well, that brings to a close our coverage of this Grand Prix meeting here at Northampton with that win for Richard Ainsworth. We look forward to seeing you again next week for more brisker stock car action. Not necessarily with the hot rods in this time, but I'm sure you enjoyed a bit of a change, a bit of variety seeing the hot rods in proper action here at Northampton this week. Look forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, goodbye from Brayfield Stadium, Northampton.